I was at Outline 2019, not too long ago, which is a small demo party hosted in the Netherlands. Uh, I was asked to do some music for the demo group Oh No, which consists of LSD Live and Flopin, both very talented shader programmers. And it was regarding their PC 4K demo, or uh, 4K intro more like, which is an executable that runs on PC and it's at most 4 kilobytes big. And it features audio and visuals. However, I had no prior experience of making music for these types of demos. Uh, it's not a matter of just making an MP3 and compressing it down. So, to accommodate for technically inept people like myself, Gopher and Powell, both from the demo group Alcatraz, came together and made Forklang, developed to make music for 4K intros. I thought it might be interesting to do a video talking about this kind of music and how it's made. I don't know anything about this stuff, I'm only just getting started and I've noticed that if I took to talk to myself out loud, it, I tend to store things much more easily. So I thought why not make a video about it and sort of learn as we go along together, possibly. So Forklang runs in any DAW, if I'm correct. Um, I'm gonna run it in Ableton. So this is a basic instrument. Uh, however, we are gonna start from scratch because people recommend that you make your own patches instead of using the default ones. If you so desire, there is a selection of preset instruments. They can be found in the folder of Forklang uh, and they should be a good reference point to get you started on uh, getting uh, getting your first couple of sounds and sort of trying to get a, a feeling for the tool. However, what I want to focus on is this. Um, oh, of course, it's always showing on top. These are all the units that are avail available in the VST. Um, envelope, if you've ever delved into synthesis, it makes sense. Same goes for oscillator filter. Distortion is, is basically a distortion effect with a sample and hold. Delay is for reverb and delay effects. And this is where it gets interesting. Arithmetic and s arithmetic and store. These are the the units that confuse me the most. So what we have here is called the stack, and currently uh, the signal is invalid. Uh, let's first try making a very simple instrument uh, and get a simple sound going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an oscillator. Uh, I'm going to make a filter and to put down a distortion and lastly I'm going to put down panning and output. So this should basically be a working instrument except it's not because it's already saying so at the bottom. So I'm just going to have to quickly check what I did wrong. I'm going to go by this, this uh, example instrument that Powell showed in his video and we can already notice that these two things so there's two arithmetic um, things right next to the oscillator so let's actually see how he built his default instrument or his I like simple instrument okay so what I have here with a lot of cheating is a patch that should work <laughs> Okay, as you can hear, there's a lot of artifacting going on. Or See, this whole stack thing is already very fucking confusing. Like, how is this going to zero? I'm not a programmer. I don't know how this, how this fucking works. But wait, it gets even more confusing, okay? So I have Powell's videos, video up uh, behind this. Say I wanted to add another oscillator. So currently, not, it's not going to give sound. Uh, because... As you can see, the stack is currently 1. However, if I set an arithmetic here and then set it to multiply, which for some reason it already did. I, I tried this before and I wanted to try it on my own. But now the signal is okay. A, B, C, D. A times B, C, D. What? Okay, well, let's let's check out the sound first. Cool. Okay, what we could also do is say that we wanted to have an envelope 
on this filter. So from the top of my head, what we what we would do is we would set an envelope, and then we would set a store, and we would refer to envelope. Oh no no no! We would we would set it to the filter, and then and then I don't know. <laughs> We have the envelope, uh, so, so the store needs to be above the envelope. So it doesn't necessarily matter that the envelope is out like later than the output. As long as the store is above the envelope, we can select the unit, which is the filter, and then what we want to do is we want to control the cutoff frequency. Now. If we set our attack up higher, we still can't get any sound because we, if I'm correctly, we still need to pop it. So we're going to add arithmetic, set it to plus pop. Oh man, how do we end up with 12? What the fuck? Oh, that's interesting. We can actually pop it in the store apparently. So if we click that, so now the signal is okay. So if everything works properly, We'll probably need to give this an amount as well. Let's set it to... There! Oh, fucking hell. So let's just, for the sake of it, set it to this. Interesting. He said frustrated with the fact that his sound is not changing. Oh, could it be that it just doesn't make sounds because... Let's see, the resonance is all the way here. Let's say, let's put that all the way here. That's still not giving me any attack. Oh, so wait, what did I do? Okay, so now it works. Let's try and clear this again and see if we can do this like from the top. What if we, we put the output here then? Would it make sound then? Pop still leaves us with a value of one. So what if we just Power with the signal two, then it's invalid. <laughs> Unit three needs four signals. What if we just got rid of the arithmetic altogether and just tried? Yeah, then the sound actually works. We want to so let's say we want to have two oscillators. Then right, a pulse and a sine. Currently there is no output, but it means that we have to combine these two signals, and that is probably done with the arithmetic. So if we set that to plus and pop well in, in any way any <laughs> oh man this is so confusing okay so at least now we have sound so the, the the attack really doesn't seem to be could it be that i have two oscillators so if i have one oscillator probably the attack would work or not okay rude is it just a pulse? Why is this not attacking as slow as it should? So we're gonna put the filter here, and then let's say we would add some distortion. Let's see, so this is a send, a, a sample and hold, which is basically a bit crusher from what I gathered. Okay, it. I'm. I'm really just stunned at why this attack doesn't do anything but we're just gonna leave it for now so let's start one more time because now we actually know how to get a signal from this thing and that means we can start building instruments so this is actually the dry signal but it seems this is the panic button by the way which i absolutely love having for some reason basically it kills all the audio that is sent by the vst okay so i'm looking through some of the standard instruments that came with the software and I'm looking at this saw bass which should probably be more at a bass frequency so let's see how they built this up right they have they start with an envelope and then nothing uh, which I guess is meant to sort of well keep it clean basically so then they have this envelope Right, and this envelope is uh, they then follow it up with a store, which basically refers to this envelope, and then the store refers the envelope to 
the filter. And then after that, they have an arith arithmetic because then the stack is at two. It stops the, stops the signal and, and the stack is back to one. Okay, so that sort of makes sense to me now, even though I still have trouble explaining it. So basically, this is controlling the cutoff frequency on row 13. So this one. So if I play this... So let's actually see how this relates to this, the envelope. Because this envelope is basically the attack, decay, sustain, release for this filter. So if I'm correct, if we up the attack on this, it should be referring to the attack on this filter. All right, yeah, that's okay. See, now we're getting somewhere. This this makes sense to me, sort of. I, I, I think I was... I, I need to practice using this store properly and then just ending it with a, a pop i guess because uh, i don't fucking know basically the arithmetic is only necessary uh, to get rid of one in the stack if your stack is up to two because it seems that as long as wait what the fuck how does it get rid of, rid of two so this is interesting we actually have like a super saw if I'm not mistaken. And then he just follows it up with two arithmetics, which basically just gets rid of two in the stack. Okay, so that makes sense. So then he has this filter, which we already discussed. That one refers to this. So the arithmetic times is basically to blend several things, which I, I, I guess it refers to blending these oscillators. Then he adds reverb, and then here we have panning, delay, another arithmetic. So what does this one mean? So yeah, reset. Let's move this one way down. So we have this envelope, and then let's try to set another envelope, and store that, and then in row 14, let's set a filter. Set the resonance here. So what we want is this envelope to control this filter, which means we select the unit, which is 14, and then what we're gonna do is select cutoff frequency and if I'm correct well we'll need to get the sound working first what we do then is we get an arithmetic and it should be set to pop so that gets the stack back to two now we have a sign and after that sign we need to get another arithmetic because our stack is too high I think plus pop and it doesn't work wait uh so this might be combine Ugh. unit nine needs more than four signals. Unit 14 is one signal. Okay, so you, you can't just... So this seems to go well until it gets to the output. However, since this filter is outside of this chain, it's not included in the stack, which basically means it doesn't work and therefore the output doesn't work. So we would have to move this up a bit. Okay, so this, this auto adjusts. So what do we get now? Aha! So, okay, so we've done something. What we've done is we've successfully linked this filter, or rather the envelope, to this filter, and now we have... Okay, so now we've got it working. It's sort of by accident, but I'm already excited about this. Now, my main problem is it doesn't seem that we can control the oscillator right now. So let's see if we can actually... Oh! Oh! I sort of did it by accident. Okay, so right now... Oh, okay, this is exciting. <laughs> See, that's so funny. I sort of did this by accident. Okay, so here's what happens. If I have it set to pop, the sound works, right? We have output. However, it's not adding this envelope. Rather, it's, it's taking this envelope, and that's c still controlling this filter. However, if I actually combine and then pop, what you're going to hear... Then I can actually control. <laughs> I sort of feel a sense of victory now because we managed to actually successfully make our first sound and have the, both the filter and the oscillator 
respond with their bo own separate attack the case sustain release or envelope for short <laughs> so that's all pretty cool but of course we want to make the sound a bit more ambitious because this sounds like shit um so let's see what happens if we add another oscillator make this one a saw have it play a little higher so now it doesn't work so I'm guessing we need to set an arithmetic and have it plus and pop. So now the sound seems okay. It works both ways though. Hmm. So there's probably going to be a difference in the signal now. So does this still work? Yes, it does. However, you notice that it's not actually playing this oscillator. So, what we need to do is probably add and then pop. Ah, there we go. Okay, so we can probably just apply the same trick when adding another oscillator. So, all we would need to do is copy this, paste this. Oh man, I'm actually starting to get the hang of this. I can't fucking believe it. <laughs> it's all just like experimenting with it, having it break, trying to figure out what's going wrong, and then just trying to fix it. Okay, so let's move this one down a little bit. And lastly, let's add some distortion. What? Why are you? Oh god, no. Distortion. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so now what you, what you see is the distortion actually broke our envelope. So what if we move it down? Still not working. Or what if we just move it way more up? Nope, still doesn't work. Oh, did we do it? Oh, we did it! Okay. So we just basically had to do an arithmetic to combine the distortion with the rest of the signal. Okay, that makes sense. Well, I've been going for an hour or so. Um, I'm gonna chill out for a bit. I hope this was interesting to you guys. Uh, it was a lot of trial and error I might... Uh, but I really enjoy this process, actually. I'm surprised at how much I enjoy it. Now it's starting to make sense to me. Basically, it just takes a lot of patience, and you need to try, and you need to not be discouraged. Because at the start of this, I had no idea how to even build instruments, and now I get a sense that I sort of know how to do that. So thank you for learning this with me. I hope it was entertaining in any way. And uh, go and make 4K music, okay?